In the throes of the Cultural Revolution, a new force emerged compact enough to fit into a pocket but powerful enough to shape a nation, the Little Red Book. As the 1960s unfolded, China was a nation gripped by the throes of the Cultural Revolution, an era marked by political upheaval, social unrest and ideological fervor. Amidst this tumultuous backdrop the Little Red Book, officially known as Quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, made its debut. This was no ordinary book. It was a potent symbol of authority, a manual of ideology, and a tool of political indoctrination. The creation of the Little Red Book was a meticulously executed endeavor. It was a compilation of quotes from Mao Zedong, the founding father of the People's Republic of China. These were not random selections. Each quote was carefully chosen to embody Mao's revolutionary thoughts on a variety of subjects. From politics and military strategy to class struggle and ideology, Mao's words were presented as guiding principles, a beacon of wisdom for the Chinese Communist Party, the People's Liberation Army, and the general populace. In the hands of the masses, the Little Red Book became more than just a collection of Mao's quotations. It was a symbol of loyalty to Mao and adherence to the ideals of the Communist Party. Possessing and quoting from the book was not just encouraged, it was mandatory. Schools, workplaces and households were all expected to study and internalize its contents. It was a means of fostering revolutionary fervor and ideological unity among the people. The Little Red Book was more than a conduit for Mao's ideology. It was a powerful tool of propaganda and political control. It was a testament to Mao's authority and influence, and a reflection of the times that shaped its creation. Thus, a seemingly small book was set to cast a long and influential shadow over China. From the hands of the intellectuals to the grasp of the common man, the Little Red Book was soon to become a ubiquitous presence in Chinese society. The rise of the Little Red Book was nothing short of meteoric. As the Cultural Revolution took hold, this pocket-sized compendium of Mao Zedong's quotations became a must-have accessory for every Chinese citizen. Imagine a book so influential that it was almost mandatory to carry it around. The Little Red Book was more than just a collection of quotes. It was a symbol of allegiance to Mao and the Communist Party, a badge of ideological purity. To quote from it was to affirm your loyalty, to show that you were a true believer in the cause. The Chinese government undertook a massive distribution campaign. From bustling cities to remote rural villages, copies of the Little Red Book flooded the country. It was as if a red tide had swept across China, leaving in its wake a society steeped in Mao's thoughts. Schools, factories, farms, even family homes. No place was untouched by this tide. Reading sessions were organized where people would gather to study and discuss the wisdom encapsulated within those red covers. But the book's influence didn't stop at the Chinese borders. It transcended national boundaries, finding its way into the hands of revolutionaries, intellectuals, and curious minds across the globe. It became a global phenomenon, a symbol of China's revolutionary spirit and its aspiration to be a beacon of socialism in the world. Quoting from the book became a common practice, not just in political discussions, but in everyday life as well. It was not uncommon to hear Mao's teachings being invoked in conversations, speeches and even casual chats. The words of Chairman Mao had become a part of the national dialogue, shaping the way people thought, spoke, and acted. The Little Red Book had successfully permeated into every corner of Chinese life, serving as a constant reminder of Mao's teachings. It was more than just a book. It was an embodiment of an era, a testament to a revolution, a symbol of a society in the throes of radical transformation. The Little Red Book was more than just a collection of quotes. It was a cultural phenomenon that shaped public discourse and instilled a sense of revolutionary zeal. A book you might wonder, how could such a simple object wield such power? The answer lies in the context of the time and the content of the book. In a society where information was strictly controlled, the Little Red Book became a primary source of knowledge, ideology, and guidance. It was not just a book, but a symbol of loyalty and adherence to the ideals of the Communist Party. The quotations within its pages were treated as indisputable truths, shaping public opinion and influencing cultural practices. From the bustling streets of Beijing to the rural farmlands of Sichuan, the Little Red Book was a ubiquitous presence. It was read aloud in schools, discussed in workplaces, and quoted at family dinners. It fostered a sense of unity among the Chinese people as everyone, regardless of their status or background, was encouraged to study and internalize its contents. 
This was not just a matter of intellectual curiosity but a matter of survival. Being well versed in Mao's quotations was a mark of ideological purity, and could protect individuals from accusations of disloyalty or counter-revolutionary behavior. It was a tool of self-preservation in a society marked by political upheaval and uncertainty. But the influence of the Little Red Book extended beyond China's borders. It was translated into dozens of languages and disseminated worldwide, becoming a symbol of China's revolutionary spirit and Mao's ideological influence. It shaped the world's perception of China, portraying it as a country united under the banner of Maoist thought. The Little Red Book, therefore, was not merely a book. It was an instrument of political control, a vehicle for ideological indoctrination, and an emblem of revolutionary fervor. It shaped public discourse, influenced cultural practices, and instilled a sense of revolutionary zeal among the masses. The Little Red Book was, therefore, not merely a book, but a vehicle for ideological unity and fervor. As time passed and China began to shift its focus towards economic development, the influence of the Little Red Book began to wane. The demise of Mao Zedong in September 1976 marked the beginning of the end for the Little Red Book's pervasive influence. The new leadership, spearheaded by Deng Xiaoping, was eager to steer China away from the tumultuous legacy of the Cultural Revolution and Mao's ideological stronghold. The country was on the brink of unprecedented economic reforms, opening its doors to foreign investment and embracing market-oriented policies. In this new era, the Little Red Book's omnipresence began to fade. It was no longer mandatory reading, and its once ubiquitous red covers gradually disappeared from public view. The quotations that had been recited daily in schools, workplaces and homes were no longer part of the popular discourse. The book that had once symbolized loyalty to Mao and adherence to Communist Party ideals was slowly relegated to the annals of history. Yet the story of the Little Red Book does not end with its decline. To this day it remains a potent symbol of a significant period in China's history. The book continues to be studied not just as a tool of propaganda and political control during Mao's era, but as a reflection of the ideological fervor that swept the nation. While its prominence may have diminished, the Little Red Book remains a symbol of a significant period in China's history. The story of the Little Red Book is a testament to the power of words and ideas, and their ability to shape a society. Understanding history like this helps us to decipher the present and anticipate the future. Our channel is a treasure trove of such intriguing historical narratives waiting to be explored. To delve deeper into the fascinating world of history, subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and turn on notifications to stay updated with our latest content.